Hi, I'm Robbie Gladwell, and today I'm going to talk to you about the Hagstrom Swede Gold Top. The Swede model has a 24 and 3 quarter inch scale length. Um, all the specifications of the guitar you'll see down here somewhere, so you can follow the, the links there to read what you need to know. Uh, what I will talk a little bit about is the actual the configuration of the wiring here and the, the, the pickup circuitry, because this is actually quite interesting. Um, they've got the, the Hagstrom Alnico 58 pickups um, in, in, in here, the humbuckers. The interesting thing about the tonal circuit, this three-way switch here, is that it brings in a, a capacitor of a different value with each setting. Um, obviously in the centre you've got no capacitor in, so when you're upwards there it's slightly more muted and you can use it but it creates a really nice jazzy tone, which I'll demonstrate later. But in the downward position here, you're using a capacitor which is slightly less of a value and that increases the inductance of the pickup, which leads to more sustain, in actual fact. You don't need full treble <clears throat> to get sustain because the actual harmonics of distortion gives you the treble. So by muting it, you actually increase the lower mid-range by having it in that position. And it would be the same for your tone controls. But the beauty is you can actually just flick that in there with no fiddling around with it and then you get the effect that you need for sustain. Gary Moore and guys like that always use their tone controls because it does give you a sound that, with distortion that you couldn't get normally without it. So for those of you that got guitars without tone controls, you're missing a big trick. Yeah, this is the gold top version, as I said earlier. Uh, it does come in other colours. The thing I like about it now is that they've gone back to the old Bakelite type knobs that they had originally in, in, in the 1950s when it was first introduced. So you've got that vintage look to it as well. But a nice carved top, mahogany body, and um, something you don't have on a lot of guitars is you've got a sort of a, a recess for your rib cage or beer gut or whatever you want to call it, <laughs> whatever excuse. And uh, yeah, it's a really, really interesting guitar, 24 and 3 quarter inch scale length and it's easy to bend the strings, got a set of tens on here, but the feel of it is wonderful, really nice slim neck as well. So if you've got smaller hands, you'll appreciate it. And if you've got larger hands, you'll find actually you get stretches that you wouldn't normally get on a big fat neck. I like both, but anyway, this works really, really well. The fingerboard, it's a composite fingerboard, they call the resonator fingerboard, and uh, it's, it's a composite material that doesn't shrink, and that's an important thing, because I find as a guitar repairer and builder, Quite often you might have a uh, rosewood fingerboard and that will shrink at a different rate to the uh, neck material so you end up with a sort of a warp in the neck. The other thing you get is sharp fret ends because of that too. You don't get that problem at all with this and it's, I suppose in terms of feel and a density it's very similar to ebony. So that gives you a sort of an idea of how it would feel under your fingers. Uh, you've got sort of medium jumbo frets as well so for string bending it's really really easy. Okay, with guitar plug in, I'm using a Husing Kettner Statesman Quad EL84. It's a two channel amplifier with a boost, so I can get some really interesting sounds out of that. Mm. I'm sure many of you will be familiar with the amplifier. Um, okay, talking about the, the actual tones available in this guitar. In the upward position, as you would find with the normal, this type of configuration, you've got the rhythm pickups. Mm. In the middle pickup, as you'd expect, you get a slightly sort of smoother sound. And the treble, you've got all the treble you need. Now to come to the interesting point, which is this three-way tone control. If I put it back to the rhythm selection here, and I put this switch upwards, it engages one of the capacitors in the prefixed, um, or preset, shall I say, uh, tone controls. So. Great for jazz. And down. It's got a smaller value capacitor, so you get sort of more of the sort of higher low mids. And of course in the middle. Now then, um, if I want to use this with distortion, uh, this is where the switch comes in. 
So I'll put this, the, you'll notice that this actual guitar is really quiet, it's incredibly well screened, you get no noise from the actual amplifier at all, apart from the hiss of the gain. And that's with the amplifier full on. Due to the construction of the guitar, you've actually got a long a tenon joint here. You get the transference of energy, really, so the sustain is absolutely incredible. Now, if I switch this tone control down and do that, the amount of sustain I get increases incredibly. No buzz, no buzz at all, apart from the, probably from the lead. But the pickups are out there, incredibly well screened, so is the control cavity, so you won't have that usual problem of sort of a noisy guitar, it's incredible. If I mute it totally, you'll hear a little bit of difference, but very, very little. actual overall output level of the amplifier is really quite low. I could talk over it and it's, you know, so normally to get that sort of sustain you'd need the amplifier very loud in the room. I'm going to put the actual tonal selector right in the middle now so we get the, uh, the additional brightness. It's a real sustain machine, an incredible sound, and with this slightly sort of a, a, a shorter scale length, it's so easy to play. It's an easy to play guitar. It's like all of the famous guitars of this shape, but one in particular, and it really, really does knock it into a cocked hat, I tell you. It's really good. Um, okay, let me just do a little bit of playing. I'll do a, some clean, some overdriven, just so you get an idea. Excuse the playing, it's a Sunday morning, I'm knackered. Had a late night last night, so you know, that's my excuse anyway. Here we go. Set everything just to just clean at the moment there. The in-between sound here with both uh, both these selectors, which are set in the middle, it's a great sort of a semi-acoustic sound. <laughs> Thought I'd play something really modern. Okay, now to the distortion sounds. I'm going to go first of all with the rhythm pickup and the tone selector in the middle. Tone selector down.
get a slightly warmer tone, but you still get that sort of nice edgy uh, sort of upper harmonic tone as well. You still get the brightness. Now with the uh, extreme setting there. Quite good at Norwegian death metal. <laughs> it makes all those sort of sounds. And being a Swedish guitar, I suppose, Norway's close enough. Okay, uh, let's try some bluesy tones. Um, again, I'll, I'll put the actual tone selector downwards so the capacitors are slightly smaller value so the effect is not quite so large. Oh yeah, the pickups are waxed as well so you won't get the microphonic problems that you have with some. And you don't lose the brightness with the volume control because it's got a, it's got a capacitor and a resistor in the circuit. So as you re, as you reduce the volume, you still get the treble. Amazing tone, I think I really like the sound of these uh, Alnico 58 pickups. Uh, and I'm totally unbiased in that sense, I love these guitars, I only play what I like. So I've got a few different brands, a few different guitars, and this is actually I think my new acquisition, I have to say, I'm really impressed with the sound and the actual tone quality of the guitar. Uh, let's uh, have a look, let's try some of the other sort of overdriven sounds that we can get. Here's a classic. I think that's still banned in most music shots, but we allow it here occasionally, especially if it makes the right sort of noise. Um, yeah. Overall, the actual flexibility of this guitar is great, from country sounds, jazz sounds, Norwegian death metal, it can just about do everything. I'll just have a bit of a play around, just a little bit of indulgence, so uh, make yourselves a cup of tea in the meantime. That was known as the Clapton woman tone, generally speaking with the tone control rolled off. That's sort of the sound that he used to get from his Les Paul way back in the day. sound. 
Okay, let's see what else we can get. Okay, so that's the Hagstrom Swede Gold Top. An amazing guitar for under a thousand pounds. I love the features. I love the fact that it's got these sort of a, the, the white Bakelite style, style knobs that uh, they had on the original guitar. The three position tone switch, which enables you instantly to go to a preset tone to help with either jazzy clean sounds or with the resonant feedback, which will actually boost that sort of effect. So lovely. Two volumes, two tone controls, pickup selector switch there, Alnico 58 pickups here too, resonator fingerboard which as I said earlier won't twist, warp, shrink, won't cause a problem with the neck, you won't have the problem of sharp fret ends, you've got a stable slim neck, beautiful instrument. Um, mahogany body, mahogany neck, I think I've said everything, everything I need to say. So here we go, check it out, under a thousand pounds, for two or three thousand pound performance. Compare it against some of the really expensive big name guitars and you'll see what I mean. Thank you. I'm really truly impressed with this. Yeah, so this is the Hags from Street. Street. <laughs> Street. <laughs> Street. <laughs> this is the Hagstrom Swedish chef.